When you look at the recent footage of the version 3 test article wreckage, your first instinct might be to cringe. It looks like a skyscraper-sized soda can crushed by an invisible giant, its internal organs exposed. But if you view the wreckage not as a disaster, but as a crime scene full of engineering clues, the story changes completely. What looked like a catastrophic end to a prototype might actually be the single most important data point SpaceX has gathered in the last 12 months. Because amidst the twisted steel and torn tanks, one critical component, the literal backbone of the next generation of spaceflight, refused to break, and that single survival story changes everything for the road to Mars. We are going to peel back the layers of this incident and reveal the engineering gold hidden inside. But before we ignite those Raptor engines, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a beat in the race to the stars. To understand why this pile of scrap is a gold mine, we first have to ask why there was not a fireball. Spaceflight is volatile. Typically, when a rocket tank ruptures, it causes a massive conflagration. This incident was fundamentally different. It was a pneumatic structural stress test, a calculated torture session using inert nitrogen gas rather than liquid methane and liquid oxygen. They used a dry gas test, not a cryogenic wet dress rehearsal. If they had rushed and filled those tanks with cryogenic fuel for a wet dress rehearsal before verifying the welds, we would not be looking at a crumpled tank. We would be looking at a crater. A cryogenic failure of that magnitude would have incinerated the test stand and damaged the surrounding tank farm. By breaking the rocket with inert gas, Space bought themselves data at a discount. They simulated the physical weight and pressure of launch loads without the thermal complexity of live cryogens, isolating the variables. That let them identify weaknesses in the tank welds and the structural seams without the pyrotechnics. This context is crucial because it explains why the vehicle is still standing and why the data gathered is so pure. That standing vehicle is the first major clue. When a pressurized vessel, like a rocket tank, loses integrity, it usually loses rigidity instantly, folding like wet cardboard. But this V3 prototype stood its ground. It remained vertical despite a catastrophic breach in the liquid oxygen section and severe deformation in the methane tank. This rigidity is evidence of the reinforced structural layout of the version 3 airframe. Imagine this failure happening on the orbital launch mount with a full stack. If the booster had collapsed, it would have taken the ship down with it, destroyed the launch tower, and set the program back by a year. The fact that the V3 frame can suffer a major rupture and still support its own weight is a testament to the increased safety margins space is building into this new beast. This is the difference between a rocket that is fragile and a rocket that is resilient. But the real magic is not just in the outer shell, it is hidden inside the belly of the beast. Let us talk about the transfer tube. In previous iterations, getting propellant from the main tanks to the engines was a complex challenge, but in version 3, SpaceX installed a massive centralized downcomer tube. This is an industrial artery. It is significantly larger than version 2 plumbing, designed to handle the massive flow rates required to feed 33 Raptor engines and, more importantly, to facilitate the violent flip maneuvers the booster performs during its return to Earth. When the tank popped, the explosion originated in the liquid oxygen tank, the exact neighborhood where this transfer tube lives. Typically, a detonation powerful enough to shred the outer hull should have turned this internal plumbing into scrap metal. But when the smoke cleared, engineers saw something baffling. The tube was almost perfectly intact. Despite a small puncture, it occupied E. Its structural integrity remained largely uncompromised. This tube is the conduit for the fuel that allows for engine relights and landing burns. If this tube is fragile, the rocket is a dead stick the moment it experiences turbulence. 
The fact that it survived a localized explosion tells us that SpaceX has successfully created a backbone for the booster that is tougher than the skin of the rocket itself. This durability suggests that the central transfer tube acts as a structural column, providing internal support even when the outer skin fails. This is essential because version 3 is tasked with harder missions, heavier payloads, precise orbital insertions, and the holy grail, catching the booster in mid-air. You cannot catch a noodle. You need a rigid, robust cylinder. This test proved that even when it is dying, version 3 is tough as nails. While the midsection disintegrated, the top of the booster, the forward section, was chilling out, completely unharmed. This section is the brain of the operation, housing the grid fins, avionics, and hot staging hardware. It steers the massive vehicle through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds and guides it into the arms of the Mechazilla Tower. The lack of damage here is partially because it was separated from the blast zone, but it also points to a deliberate reinforcement of the forward dome and grid fin load points. With upcoming catch attempts, the stress on this area will be off the charts. The grid fins act as control surfaces, battling the atmosphere. If the mounting points flex or fail, the catch is impossible. Seeing this section survive the shockwave gives us confidence that the brains of the operation are housed in a fortress. So what needs to change? The data is clear. Reinforce the tanks. The fuel tanks are the most sensitive component when exposed to cryogenic propellants and pressure differentials. The failure proves that current weld techniques and material thickness in transition zones were not sufficient for the version 3 architecture. We can expect additional protective layers and redesigned weld schedules to prevent leaks and ensure efficiency during flight. But the real challenge lies in the plumbing. These pipes are vulnerable to stress fractures. A single crack in a downcomer does not just mean a leak, it means an engine shutdown, a fire, or a loss of vehicle. This is where Raptor 3 enters the story. If this test article had survived, we might have seen Raptor 3 engines strapped to it. But now the torch passes to the next booster, likely booster 33 or 34. Raptor 3 is not just an upgrade, it is a total reimagining. It features a vastly simplified plumbing interface that transforms the engine bay layout. However, integrating 33 of these is an engineering nightmare. The booster needs a foundation that can handle the acoustic violence of over 9,000 tons of thrust. The failure allows them to double-check the thrust puck and mounting hardware before risking 33 works of art. The engine section is the business end. It needs to support static fires and full duration burns without flinching. So when do we actually fly? The ship, the upper stage, is already sprinting ahead, moving through production faster than anticipated. This puts the entire weight of the schedule on the booster. SpaceX is going to be incredibly careful here. They will inspect every inch of the next prototype to make sure the ghost of this failure does not haunt the new airframe. Once the new booster is stacked and the Raptor 3 engines are mounted, we could see the most powerful static fire in human history as early as mid-January. If that goes well, Flight 12, the debut of the full V3 stack, could be on the pad by late January or early February. It is easy to feel discouraged by explosions, but that misses the point. This year has been a grind. Both stages of Starship have hit walls, but this is the price of ambition. The test article was a sacrifice. It died on the stand so that the flight hardware could live on the launch pad. The data gathered from that destruction is worth more than a thousand hours of simulations. The broken tanks are lessons. The twisted metal is data. The fact that they caught this issue before flight, before putting humans or Starlink satellites on board, is a massive victory. The V3 design is a leap, not a step. And when you leap, sometimes you stumble on the landing. But the recovery is what defines this company. The incident was a course correction. It proved that the new structural backbone is incredibly resilient. It proved that the fuel transfer systems can survive hell.
and it proved that SpaceX's testing protocols are working, catching failures on the ground so they do not happen in the sky. The next booster is being assembled right now, carrying the DNA of its fallen predecessor, but upgraded and smarter. The engines are ready. The ship is ready. The next time we see a V3 booster on the stand, it will not be there to crack, it will be there to conquer. The next leap in the Starship program is not just coming, it is being welded together as we speak. So, are you ready to see Raptor 3 roar to life? Let me know in the comments if you think Flight 12 will happen before February. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the engineering, make sure to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.